Hey, everyone. I'm going to kick this off right away with an easy question. Raise your hand if you have had a shot of alcohol in your life. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay. Um, and which of you had a proper wine tasting experience? Ah, uh, not that many. Uh, I guess we have a room full of party people. I'm sure I would have gotten a similar response had I asked you about pop music and classical music. And we can all see why. Pop songs, they can feel a little bit like those shots. They're short, quick, and easy. Classical music can feel like wine. It can be heavy, complicated, and takes too long to consume. I am not a wine expert, but I recently went to a proper wine tasting, and I'm going to use wine as an analogy to help you discover why listening to classical music is so worth it. In classical music, we distinguish most often between four periods, the Baroque, the Classical, Romantic, and the 20th century period. With wine, everyone is familiar with three main colors, white, pink, and red. Let's think of the Baroque era now as red wine, the Classical as white wine, the Romantic as our rosé, and 20th century red again. As you can see, perhaps a bit more heavy and spicy red. If you start your classical music experience with Bach's Mass in B minor, a Mahler symphony, or perhaps something like this, It will feel like starting with those heavy red wines. You would just spit them out. You would walk out of the concert hall. If you start with Mozart, for example, with his unfailing structural quality, unstoppable flow in music, ear-warm melodies, it might just feel like a very fresh, fruity, light white wine, perhaps something like this. Many wine drinkers, I believe, will concur that rosé is a good place to start as well. Likewise in music, you can't go wrong with some romantic Franz Liszt. This would be the first step of slowly but surely immersing yourself into the world of classical music, listening to something as clear as white wine and as light as a rosé. Once I became aware of the distinctions in the wine's colors, I discovered that there are many varieties. Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, and so on. As you might already know, there is not just Mozart. There is Ludwig van Beethoven, Joseph Haydn, and many others. While some of Beethoven's music might feel a bit more robust, perhaps like a full-bodied Chardonnay. Well, 
and some Haydn might just feel like some sparkling Prosecco. Exploring the different composers within an era, their style, and the various works they had brought to life is your second step of becoming a classical music lover. The following sentence might sound as familiar to wine drinkers as it comes to music admirers. During this stage, explore the different essences, moods, and characters. What matters in the wine world is very much the producer. Some ideal ones for Chardonnay might involve certain French, Italian, or even Argentinian brands. One variety of wine can be produced, delivered, in many ways, using contrasting techniques and different grapes. This is where listening to classical music gets the most intriguing. One particular piece of music can be produced, delivered, in numerous ways, in many independent interpretations. Let's come back to the list piece I played, our rosé for tonight, and see how the interpretation can vary. The first one could be very big, bright, and rich. The second one could be perhaps more mysterious, intimate and calm. Well, and the third one could just be very light, flowy, and effortless. With wine, this would be the stage where people would start to call you an enophile, which literally means a wine enthusiast. In classical music, we don't have a fancy word like that. You would just be a classical music enthusiast. You are able to tell the difference between various interpretations, you have a list of your favorite artists, and you are very much starting to create your own idea about music. How you think it should be played, how you would like it to be played, or even how you believe it should be played. I must tell you, when I found a fine producer of my favorite wine, it was a really nice feeling. My reaction was, oh, wow, this wine is really nice. Let's buy three more. What kind of emotions, inspiration, profound inner journey would you go through listening to your favorite symphony with your favorite orchestra. Perhaps right here, in Prague, in the beautiful Rudolfinum Hall. Trust me, the way you would feel would be much deeper than just, oh wow, that was really nice. This is where the experience from classical music in comparison to wine tasting is way more powerful, enriching, and profound. Before I end my talk with a piece from Chopin, I would like to give you one last wine-related piece of advice on how to listen to classical music. There are four recognized stages to a wine tasting. The appearance, in glass, in mouth, and the aftertaste. Before I start playing, get the feeling of the room you are in, in Rudolfinum, Look at the magnificent chandelier, decorated walls, humongous organ. As I start to play, feel the aroma of the piece. Is it cold, warm? Do you feel drawn to it? 
As I continue to play, what is happening inside of you? Are you feeling nostalgic, anxious, or perhaps even loved? And once you go home, reflect. How did you like that piece, actually? Did it make you remember something from your past, or did you get to travel to a fantasy world? Indulge in defining the complexity of your listening needs like you would with wine. Make listening to classical music a wine tasting experience.
Thank you.